So recently, there have been massive protests in Gaza. Uh, so right now, Gaza is essentially basically a prison uh, for Palestinians. All their borders are basically controlled by Israel. So yeah, you have to, you know, ask Israel, uh, get permission from Israel to leave and not only that, but the place is very, very economically uh, depressed. So in response to all this, the Palestinian people have had enough. And this time they're trying something revolutionary, nonviolence. Uh, now, look, uh, there have been some uh, violent acts, uh, as I'm going to explain later, uh, which uh, the Israeli soldiers are using as uh, justification in order to use deadly force. But overall, most of these protests have been incredibly peaceful. And what people have been doing is essentially marching towards the Israeli border. Not to harm anybody, but basically just to make a point. Now, one of the people who was killed uh, during this protest uh, was a young man uh, named Yasser Mur Murtaja. Uh, now, Murtaja uh, was somebody who was married and had a young son. Uh, and he died on Saturday after being shot uh, while uh, taking part in the protest. Oh, did I say he was taking part of the protest? I meant that he was covering the protest. Because it turns out that Murtaja was a journalist. Now, in fact, I'm going to explain um, some of the work that he's done and where it, had, where it has uh, appeared in. His work, according to the New York Times, has appeared in networks such as Al Jazeera. Uh, and in 2016, he worked as a cameraman that covered the global refugee crisis. Now, that video, uh, that documentary, I should say, included uh, Palestinians in Gaza. Now, Murtaja, whom friends and family described as ambitious and always smiling, was one of nine people fatally shot on Friday after Israeli troops decided that it would be a great idea for them to use live ammunition on peaceful protesters. Five other journalists were injured by live fire, as well, according to the Pan Palestinian Journalist Syndicate. So, look, uh, more devastating than Israeli forces using live fire on protesters, these people, uh, these journalists, were also clearly marked as journalists. In fact, uh, I want to show you some pictures here uh, of... Um, Murtaja uh, after he was uh, after he was shot so let's go to it so look uh, that clearly says press on it I mean you can't get more clear than that and somebody thought no it'd be a great idea to shoot him now notice he, that he's even wearing a vest but still he was shot in the stomach which means that the gunshot had to come from the side. So, there's your context there. So, these people, it says, as I said, these people were there to cover the protests. They were not violent protesters. But, look, if you, get to, if, if you cover the protests, if you cover what's actually going on there, and if you get too close to the border, well, I guess that's it. You get shot, you get killed. Israeli soldiers apparently have the right to murder you if you get too close. But it's not just journalists. Uh, more than a thousand people, including nearly 400 on Friday, when a 14-year-old boy was also among those killed, uh, have been shot over the past week, according to the Palestinian, uh, Palestinian Health Ministry in Gaza. Now, as you saw, he was wearing a helmet. He was wearing that jacket. Um... Uh, it, 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 you know, that protective vest. And nonetheless, he was shot along with many of these other people, but this time he was shot fatally. Uh, now, one person uh, who was with him, Rory uh, Donahue, who was a Middle East consultant and former news editor at the Middle East Eye, who spent time with Murtaja in Gaza, said, quote, he was, he was kind, gentle, and caring eager to become the best journalist he could be because his aim was always to document the Palestinian people's suffering and actually get that out into the public. 
And of course, that's super important because once people actually understand what is going on in Palestine, then I think it's easier to understand why sometimes um, there, are, there are mass protests, is what's happening today, and there is violence in that area. It is because people are suffering, people are basically living in prison conditions in their own homes. There's no opportunity, there's no jobs, and you wonder why there is violence. I'm not saying that the violence is right, but I'm saying that it's understandable why people get violent. When you basically live in this police state slash prison camp, whatever, people are unfortunately going to go towards violence. And that, of course, allows uh, the Israeli soldiers, the right-wing government of Israel, to say, oh, look at these violent people. I guess we're going to have to crush them more and use live ammunition. Look, this wasn't an accident, okay? Right now, the, I think the biggest threat to the Israeli occupation of Gaza is the lack of world outrage at the conditions inside Gaza. And that's what these journalists are attempting to bring forward to the people. So I think this is leading to journalists unfortunately being shot, unfortunately being killed by Israeli snipers. It... it it's horrible there. What is it going to take for the world to get outraged? What is it going to take for Israel to stop doing this? Again, they want to blame this all on the protests. Oh, there's people throwing uh, Molotov cocktails. There are people throwing rocks. There are people trying to cross the, the border, which I don't believe that they're trying to cross the border. They're trying to make a point uh, by getting close to the fence. Does that give them justification to murder people? No, there is no justification for outright shooting people. Now, of course, the Israeli government say, well, no, we're just trying to wound them. That's all we're doing. We're just, we're just trying to defend our border against these unruly, these terrorists. And some of the people that we shot, they were terrorists, but not the majority of people. The majority of people out there are just regular people who are practicing nonviolent resistance. And yet, again, these people are getting shot. These people are getting murdered. What is it going to take for everybody to pay attention? Hey, everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.